Hi, it is Anika from Living for Later, and I want to just talk to you really quickly about the fact that, that hearing the voice of the Lord is not always convenient. Two days ago, um, I got up at 3 a.m., and I it was not by choice, not by choice at all, and I was so irritated initially because I was so tired, but as I laid there in the stillness of the morning and just began to lift my heart back up, lift my heart to God because I couldn't fall back asleep, and as I was just praying quietly in the bed, I heard the voice of the Lord speak to me and it wasn't in an audible voice. It was just this deep impression. And as he was speaking to me, he was giving me the answer and clarity for something that had been on my heart for months now and I didn't know which direction to go in. And he spoke in such a clear way to my heart and there was no denying that it was the voice of the Lord. And while I was happy to receive the clarity, I just was thinking, my flesh was thinking, this is not convenient, right? Have you ever been there? Perhaps it's not about, you know, the actual time of the day that God speaks to you that's inconvenient. Perhaps it's about the season of life that you're in and you feel like, man, I'm comfortable. I have my rhythm down. I have my routine. I am good. And then the voice of the Lord comes and disrupts that comfort, right? And you feel like God is leading you in a different direction into something new, into something unknown. That can be extremely interesting convenient, right? To push beyond our comfort zone and to go into the unknown as God, God's voice leads us, right? Perhaps it's in the process of sinning and you enjoying that sin that suddenly you hear the voice of God and conviction sets in and you're like, no, <laughs> not now, God. I just want to enjoy my sin. I Perhaps it's, you know, in the process of you telling somebody off and feeling good that the words are coming together and you're able to just cut them with your words and the conviction of the Lord comes in to say, mute. Don't say nothing else. That's inconvenient, right? Or other sins that we may enjoy. So, I could go on and on. And the point is, again, that the vo hearing the voice of the Lord is not convenient, always convenient for us, but it's for us to obey. And I just want to give a few examples from scriptures. I think about um, Noah, right, in the book of Genesis, and God calls him to build this ark. And um, God tells him, hey, you know, I'm going to flood this entire to, this entire earth. And you have to understand that they had never seen anything like this. And Noah had to remain consistent for 120 years in building that ark, right? So it's amazing to me. And to me, that's inconvenient because people were mocking him and they're like, and you know, he's trying to preach truth truth and righteousness and he had to remain consistent for all of those years when people are like for real God said this okay Noah sure right so initially when we hear the voice of the Lord it can feel it convenient right but as time goes on it can feel extremely inconvenient because it's like, okay, at what point in time are we going to wrap this up, God? At what point in time, um, the thing that you've said to me, at what point in time is this thing going to manifest, right? I also think about the young boy, Samuel, who was not yet familiar with hearing the voice of the Lord. And three times, you know, he ran to his spiritual mentor, Eli, saying, hey, I thought you called me. And Eli had to explain to him, no, it's not me calling you. This this is God. And the next time that you hear this voice calling your name, respond by saying, speak, Lord, I am listening. And the message that Samuel receives was a word of rebuke for Eli, the very one that had been training him from he was young and his mother um, Hannah had brought him to the temple. Can you imagine what that must have been like um, for Samuel to offer this word of rebuke to the very one that you really had looked up to, um, you know, all these years? And that I'm sure was inconvenient. And I can think about it like I know for me, I like to be the bearer of good news. Like, yes, give me the wonderful words to give to people, Lord. But 
the idea of giving a word of rebuke to people is not often convenient for me. But again, it's not about my convenience. It's about me walking in obedience to whatever the voice of the Lord is telling me. I think then we look at the life of Jonah, who for him, he was like, you know what? I am good, God. I am not going to Nineveh to speak to these wicked people at all, right? So for him, he was like, this is an inconvenience. I'm not doing it. I don't want to do it. So Jonah decides to go into the opposite direction of what God is telling him to do. And if nothing else, the life of Jonah teaches us that when we try to run away from the voice of the Lord because it's inconvenient and because it's not what we want to do, we create an even bigger inconvenience, right? Because we see the the dramatic production that ends up happening with Jonah running away from what God is telling him to do. He was really inconvenient. You know, you have this big storm, you have been swallowed by a fish. Like, that's a lot of inconvenience right there. So we would do well to say, you know what, I'll get past my minor of inconvenience, Lord, and I'll submit to your voice. Thank you very much. I could go on and on with just different examples from scriptures, but I think what we really need to understand as children of God, God is not there to submit to our schedule and our convenience, right? It's not, okay, God, I want to hear your voice, but let me set the terms of how you speak, when you speak, the circumstances for when you speak. No, no, no. Our job is to put an ear to the voice of the Lord and say, you know what, God, I am going to submit to your voice, no matter how convenient it may be, even if that voice um, challenges my tradition, the convenience of my tradi traditions, as we even look right in the book of Acts and the story of Peter and how the voice of God in that vision tells him to rise up and eat animals that Peter was like, no, 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 according to my tradition, God, this is unclean. I can't touch this thing, right? But the voice of the Lord speaks to Peter and challenges that tradition. And as we see that story play out, we see that there was a an even greater meaning behind it because Peter being challenged, right, uh, uh, and heeding the voice of the Lord and going to the home of Cornelius, one who was a Gentile, and being able to bring the good news of Christ there and uh, 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 just the message of salvation, right? So Peter's willingness to respond to the voice of God, even though it was inconvenient and challenged his tradition, helped to bring salvation to others. So it's for us to understand that it's so much bigger than us. It's not just about our convenience when God speaks to us. It's about us saying, God, speak. I am listening and I am going to do whatever it is that your voice is telling me to do, even though it's inconvenient, even though it's uncomfortable. But God, I am willing to look beyond my comfort and my convenience and recognize that this is so much bigger than me. So pray to hear the voice of the Lord, yes, but do understand that it will not always be convenient but it's for us to rejoice in the fact that the creator of the universe is even speaking to us, number one, and to also respond in obedience. All right, you be blessed.